Welcome back, everyone. This is Dr. Gebrek. We are studying labor economics, and this is labor supply chapter two, part sixteen. We are going to start with policy applications now, and we are looking at the impact of cash grants, part of welfare, a uh, type of welfare program, on labor supply. So let's talk about uh, policy application, welfare programs, and work incentives. So, in 1960s, United States declared war against poverty, okay? Aid to Families with Dependent Children, AFDC, is an example. TANF, TANF, Temporary Assistance to Needy Families, also another form of these welfare programs. Clinton's PR work, which is Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act came in. He said, we are going to end the welfare as we know it. Okay, so with this act, it limited eligibility for these programs, limited lifetime receipt, also mandated work-related activities to be able to be eligible. Research shows that this limits had the greatest impact. And the time limits, you know, so it's not a lifetime provision of welfare, but they give you a certain time. You're going to receive it as long as your income is below this, but you need to be working. So the largest impact happened in the welfare participation and decreased the welfare participation for those with younger children. Okay, so let's talk about cash grant type of welfare programs. So biggest example is aid to families with dependent children. This straight up reduces work incentives. So you're basically giving cash grant without requiring any work um, schedule or you're not requiring anything. We're just going to give you this money. That's it. Okay. So eligible person receives a cash grant as long as they are unemployed. So the question is, why should I work? If I'm receiving, let's say, $1,000, obviously, they don't pay this much, right? Not as much. $1,000 per week, why should I work? This was actually an issue during the uh, pandemic. What happened was that people were given some unemployment benefits. Plus, we had some pandemic uh, stimulus checks. And also, for each child, we were given certain grants. So, this reduced the probability of working. Why should I work? So cash grant type of welfare reduces supply of labor by increasing non-labor income. So this is directly injecting to your uh, V, which raises the reservation wage. Okay, so this is what it looks like graphically. Take it or leave it cash grant of $500 per week. Okay, so imagine there is no cash grant. The initial budget line is this, okay? So this individual is subject to this budget line. There is no non-labor income. This is what happens actually when you don't have non-labor income, your budget line starts intercepting with the leisure uh, axis, which is the x-axis, consumption, okay? So leisure, 100 of 10 hours. So initially, imagine this individual works for 40 hours, 40 hour work, 70 hours of leisure, 70 hours of leisure, 0 to 70 leisure hours, uh, and hours of work, 40 hours. And this person also consumes consumption goods of $600. So what if you give this person $500 of cash grant? So you are basically shifting this individual's endowment point to this point G endowment point, right? What's going on here? Now your new budget line starts from here, 500. That's the V, okay? And then your budget line will be the original, this budget line, but it is going to, it's basically shifting up parallel to the original budget line, okay? So basically, you can actually... (laughs) You can actually work much less or completely exit the labor market because your endowment point has moved from here, if you didn't work, to point G, okay? 
So simply you can look at an indifference curve that passes through your endowment no work point with a cash grant. Okay, now this is your reservation wage. It is going to be greater than the market wage. Why should I work? Okay. Moves the worker from point P to potentially point G. So P, you were working 40 hours to zero working hours. Encourages the worker to leave the labor force. So imagine us. I'm working 40 hours, making $600. I could actually work nothing and have $500. Many people would choose just working nothing at all. Okay. So point G, actually, this is not only common sense, but this is math. Point G is a higher indifference curve, generates more utility than P. U0 is a lower indifference curve than U1. So point G is a what we call corner solution. You're at one extreme. You're not working at all. Okay. Cash grants improves your endowment point, your non-labor income. Goes up from 0 to 500. Probability of work goes down. Okay. Here's the issue, folks. These people are not lazy. They do not lack work ethic. Okay. This is just the model. There's just no incentives for them to work. Okay. So cash grant like this is actually very, very uh, bad in terms of it pushes people out of labor force so let's cover part 17 in this video as well now we're going to do cash grant with a twist so this is the aid to families with dependent children okay let's see how it works it has a twist so cash grant with a twist aid to families with dependent children before 1996 if you didn't work you received $500, okay? All right, so this is, let's say your wage rate is $10, negative W, $10 wage rate, F, E. Let's say you're at point P. If you worked, aid to families with dependent children with a twist, was the grant was reduced 67 cents per $1 woman earned in the labor market. So you earned $1, you lost 70 67 cents you work one hour you made ten dollars you lost six point seven dollars of it that's a lot so assume a program similar to aid to families with dependent children but for simplicity okay i'm just using different numbers but same problem same uh model if you don't work you get five hundred dollars if you work, government reduces 50 cents per dollar earned off of that $500. So if you're making $10 per hour work, you are actually losing $5 from your grant. So real wage is not $10 for you. For each $10 you make, you're losing $5 from your grant. So your real wage is $5. So this is the endowment point now with 80 families with dependent children. When the person doesn't work at all, you make $500. But the slope of the budget line is not parallel to this original blue purple budget line, FE, but it is actually going to be flatter. It's going to be flatter. And the slope is going to be if the real wage is $5, right? For each dollar you make, you lose 50 cents from this. $500. If you made $10 per hour, you lost five of that through your grant. So your real wage is $5. So the slope is going to be not negative 10, negative five. So the slope of this new budget line is this orange budget line starts in the endowment point 500 and boom, look at this budget line much uh, at a disadvantage. So in this case, for instance, you can move to a higher indifference curve, right? If this is U0 initially, you're at point P. You can move to a higher indifference curve, U1. Look what happens. You actually increase your leisure. Leisure goes up. Your hours went down. So it didn't push you out of labor market, but you were actually working much less. So that's not good. So... 
the the pure income effect can be shown okay so i'm just going to show you pure income effect is to draw a budget line parallel to purple one, uh, purple one touching new indifference curve somewhere here p to q is your income effect leisure is going to go up q to r is your substitution effect again leisure goes up leisure always goes up all right so pre-1996 welfare programs aid to families with dependent children type cash grants reduce both probability of work and hours of work so leisure went up hours of work went down aid to families with dependent children reduces hours by 10 to 50 percent so these kind of grants actually reduces the uh, incentives to work so what works what works in terms of policy you can reduce tax on welfare recipients and this increases hours of welfare recipients and time limits so definitely helping with the payroll taxes and such to push people to work alternative is called earned income tax credit so this started in 1975 expanded since it's still out there by 2007, this is the largest cash benefit entitlement program by 40 billion size. Okay, so A2, or sorry, earned income tax credit should increase labor force participation rate for non workers. We're going to see it, study it in the next slide. It encourages some non workers to start working, it never encourages a worker to quit working. So, cash grant, not a good idea. Earned income tax credit we're going to study next is actually great. Increases labor force participation rate of non-workers. Encourages non-workers to start working. Never encourages workers to quit. Produces income effect. So ours work should change. Okay. So earned income tax credit produces income effect. And we'll study that in the next video.